Hey, good afternoon, everyone. How's it going today? So what am I working on now? Well, I'm putting that motor back into that um, Jeep Patriot when I explained about the um, calipers being flipped and what it did to the hoses and stuff like that and how that can cause brake wear. Like I said, I wasn't going to make a video on doing the motor in this one, but what I wanted to show you is something that's very important when you're dealing with an automatic transmission in any car. It doesn't matter what it is. When you're reattaching the torque converter to the flywheel, or flex plate, flex plate, not flywheel, when you're reattaching it to the flex plate, make sure you're using the right hardware. Make sure you're using the right bolts. I've seen people use the wrong bolts and it can create major problems. Let me explain. So here is one of the factory bolts. This is a torque converter bolt. And this goes up inside here and screws in and holds the converter in place. Okay, it's a bolt. How specific can it be? Very specific. I've seen people get generic hardware that's way too long. And what happens is it goes in, you know, they shave it off or whatever and think they're okay. Problem is, if it goes in and it touches the flywheel, uh, touches the torque converter, the actual uh, shell of the converter, it can distort that piece of the plate. Now, why is that important? Every single car today has a lockup torque converter. Remember my own van where the lockup solenoid went bad? Okay, let me explain it real quick. I'm gonna walk over to the transmission that just came out of that vehicle. So this is going into the junkyard. But now, the torque converter bolts go in here, and if you look, you can see they're shouldered, or they bottom out inside there. This flat right here on the inside is kind of like a flywheel. Sorry about that, my Snap-on guy just showed up and he opened the garage door. But anyway, that flat part, that's actually like a flywheel. And that clutch that gets actuated presses up against that. That's not a super thick material. You tighten up a bolt that hits that, it distorts it. Can you imagine having a flywheel with a dimple in it? You know, going the opposite way into the clutch? It'll destroy it. You'll destroy everything. You can destroy the transmission. You know, first off, you might have lockup that won't release because that pinches it together. You know, anything's a possibility. So I've seen it before. Uh, cars would, for some reason, it was very prevalent on Dodge Ram trucks that came through with the 5.2 or 5.9. I don't know why. But when I was at the Chrysler dealer, I saw a ton of those things where, you know, some shop had put in the wrong bolts or the customer put in the wrong bolts. You know, like, why? Like, what? I don't understand. But, uh, yeah, I've seen it several times. So if you get a situation on any car, no matter what it is, except maybe Fords, because Fords, a lot of Fords use studs where you put a nut on. But just be mindful of that, that you put the right hardware in, because you put the wrong hardware in, you could destroy it. You know, you could puncture a hole in it, even if it's an older vehicle and it doesn't have like a lockup converter. You could puncture the converter, and then what? You got a bigger problem. So, <clears throat> anyway, it's just something to think about. Use the right hardware in the right place. You know, like I said, if you look at this bolt, kind of a specific bolt. You know, plus it's got a shallow head here, so this way it clears between, you know, the, the flex plate and the back of the block. Because that's another thing, too. I've seen cars, well, cars, trucks, doesn't matter. I saw a 4.3 Jimmy years back that was making this god-awful like squeaking noise and um, somebody had put in four bolts that were the wrong bolts that were so long like the head of them was so deep it was actually cutting into the back of the block. Why? Like just couldn't you figure that out as you're rotating the motor that they're hitting? You should be able to feel that as you're rotating the motor. So. Oh one other thing I wanted to show you. Here is the flex plate. Here's the bolt that the, here's the hole that the bolt goes through, see that? Now, as you see, it's got slop in it. That's kind of built in. On almost every application, you're gonna find a hole like this, where it's a much tighter fit side to side, see that? That's the hole you wanna start with. When you're catching the bolts through there and into the converter, that's the hole you wanna start with because you line that one up and as you're going around, you should be able to line all the other ones up. If you don't, if you catch it on one of the other ones first, and I've seen this too many times also, people will snug them down a little bit, and all of a sudden they'll get the last one. You can't even start it because the hole is off just slightly. So start with that one, and always too, what I do is when I go to 
bring them in, I get them down tight, not tight tight, but just snug. I get them down, bottomed out, whatever, and then I back them off like a half a turn. This way, the converter, actually here, let me show you. I didn't, this is the last bolt. You hear that? If you look close, you can see they're just loose enough so where the whole thing moves. So now I can go back and you can hear it making noise and that's perfectly fine because if you look close too, you can see it move inside there. Can you see that? Oops, sorry, that was a little too... But let me go back. If you, you could probably just catch it, what I'm talking about. But then again, this one has the squared off hole that already has a bolt in it. So, but anyway, it's just a couple of tips I wanted to show you or share with you. Um, and hopefully you get something out of that. So, there again, getting something out of my videos, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.